Let's begin with a digestive system overview, including the histology of the digestive tract as well as the peritoneum. The digestive system or alimentary canal is made up of the following. First, the oral cavity, which is where food is processed, mechanically separated, and early enzymatic action takes place. The pharynx contains the epiglottis, and this separates the airways from the esophagus during swallowing. The esophagus itself is a tube that transports food to the stomach. The stomach then digests the food via enzymes and mechanical mixing. The small intestine further digests, absorbs water and micronutrients. The liver and the underlying gallbladder are involved in metabolism specifically of fats, as well as hormone production and detoxification. The large intestine is primarily responsible for the absorption of water, vitamins, and the preparation and compaction of feces. The histology of the digestive system. Throughout the length of the digestive tract, the histology is very similar. It changes in some key regions. Muscular layers within the wall of the intestines and the digestive tract facilitate mixing movements and propulsion of food. Shown here in the diagram is a cross section of the intestinal wall. The lumen is in the center. The muscularis mucosa and submucosa are surrounded by circular and longitudinal muscle layers. The wall can be divided into four main concentric layers. Mucosa, submucosa, the muscularis externa, and the serosa. Within the mucosa are folds known as plica. These increase the surface area for absorption. Each layer of the digestive tract has a key function. The mucosa is the inner layer of the digestive tract. It's specialized for absorption and includes, as we've mentioned, plica. It can be made up of squamous epithelium for toughness or columnar epithelium for secretion and absorption. The submucosa is the next layer, and it contains blood vessels, the lymphatics, and in some regions, exocrine glands. Along the edge of the submucosa is the submucosal plexus, and this plexus is a network of nerve fibers that innervates this layer. The next layer of the digestive tract wall is the muscularis externa. This contains the smooth muscle layers that mix the food and move it along the tract. These muscles are controlled by the myenteric plexus. Parasympathetic ganglia increase muscular tone, whereas sympathetic fibers relax and inhibit muscular activity within the digestive tract. The fourth layer of the digestive tract wall is the serosa. This is a covering over the muscularis externa. It's made up of an epithelial layer and a connective tissue layer, and this layer provides the blood supply and nerves. Peristalsis and segmentation are two actions performed by the digestive system. Peristalsis is the movement of food through the digestive tract. This involves a contraction behind the food bolus from circular muscles. There is also a contraction of the longitudinal muscles ahead of the bolus, and together this moves the food. Segmentation is the process whereby the digestive material is mixed and churned by contractions of the smooth muscle. This does not lead to a net movement in digestive material, but instead mixing and mechanical separation. The majority of the digestive system lies within the peritoneum. The peritoneum is a serous membrane that lines the abdominal cavity. And the organs within the peritoneal cavity are divided into three main regions. Intraperitoneal, where for example the stomach and liver are. Retroperitoneal, 
where the kidneys and ureters are, and secondarily retroperitoneal, as in the pancreas. Within the peritoneal cavity are sheets of serous membrane in which regions of the digestive tract are suspended. For example, the dorsal mesentery of the stomach forms a pouch known as the greater omentum, and this thick layer provides energy and insulation. On the ventral surface of the stomach, between the stomach and the liver, is the lesser omentum. 